Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. I honestly don't know. Um, I think it's Tuesday. So happy Tuesday night, everyone. I am so excited you're tuning in live. If you are brand new to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel, leave me a comment, introduce yourself, and let me know what you've got going on in your neck of the woods. If you're brand new, to our channel, or you've been a friend here for years, I first want to welcome you to the channel. Um, here at Makers Gonna Learn, you are gonna find out everything you need to know about mastering your Cricut, learning how to be the best crafter in the entire world, and unlocking your creativity. I'm Tanner Bell, the founder here at Makers Gonna Learn, so you also get to learn a lot about my personal life, which is what um, tonight's live stream is about. Um, I had a very exciting announcement over on Instagram a few, about two weeks from, two weeks ago. It's been two weeks. Um, and I know that there are so many questions that I felt like deserve to be addressed here on a live stream rather than trying to piecemeal it together on a live stream dedicated to a craft project. Um, so tonight I want to use this video as kind of an opportunity to share with you guys everything um, so that we can answer any of your questions. Um, and if you have any questions, I want to answer those tonight. And then that way people can also always tune back to this live stream and um, get their questions answered with our entire journey, because there's a lot that I can share. There's a lot that I cannot share, um, but it's going to be a great process nonetheless. So I'm so, so excited to have you guys here with me tonight. Um, hello, hello, uh, Linda, Tracy, Becky, Leah. Hey, still awake. Stacy, Emily, Angie, um, Angie, Debbie, Rebecca. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm so excited. The Lord has showed up and showed out for us in so many aspects over the past few weeks. So my friends, I am so, so um, thankful for you guys to be there. All your prayers um, and everything over the past two weeks have been just phenomenal. Um, so I want to read to you guys real quick. Um, just, well, I'll, I'll just tell you, I won't read you the post because you probably read the post. So if you guys did not already know, Courtney and I welcomed two beautiful kiddos into our home uh, two weeks ago today. Two weeks ago today, um, we met two complete, complete strangers um, that are, the only thing I can really share about them is their age. Um, so I'll share that they are younger elementary school age um, children into our home. Um, and it's been kind of a crazy, crazy whirlwind of the past two weeks being a stepdad or a foster dad um, in this process is going, it's been, it's been amazing. I've been so excited. I've loved every single second of it. It has been beautiful. It has been wild. And I'm so excited to share that with you guys tonight. So, um, oh, so sweet. You guys are, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a while since I've seen you, Jackie. Yes. Hello. So I want to start from the very beginning, many, many years ago when little did I know the Lord placed it on my heart to foster children um, because this has definitely been something on my heart. And then when I met Courtney to find out it was also on her heart. Um, so when we got married, you know, if you watched our wedding video, you know, it was such a special sacred moment. Um, and this is a big part of it, y'all. This is a huge part of it. The heart that we have to serve here in Morristown, Tennessee um, is just so pressing to us and so serious that we've had it on our heart for so long. So this is, first of all, over seven years in the making. I have thought about wanting to eventually be a foster parent since I can probably say second or third grade. And the reason why is when back when I was in second or third grade, my mom actually worked as a caseworker. So she um, got to go into the homes, get to help reunify. Um, the reunification process is so important, um, which I'm just so excited to talk more about later on in tonight's live stream because you may be super brand new to how foster care works. So I want to answer that tonight because I think tonight can be a great opportunity 
for a lot of you guys that have no idea what foster care is or think it's adoption, it's not. That's not the goal of foster care. So stay tuned. Um, anyway, back then my mom was a caseworker. She would travel in homes, help with um, removing children, help with getting them back in the home and kind of the whole process for the kids. So there would be times on Saturdays where people would call and say, hey, I need food. I don't have food. I don't have a way to get food. Um, and part of her job was to help them. So we would go deliver groceries and, you know, see where the children were living. Um, she would show me pictures of just some about how, you know, some kids lived. It wasn't always a beautiful home, right? So whatever that looks like, there's, you know, things going on. Like she exposed me to that at such a young, young age. And that really stuck with me. Um, and when I met Courtney, her journey through, um, I think a cousin had like uh, so many foster kids in and out of their home that that really touched her heart as well. So when we met and started dating, we constantly, constantly talked about foster care. Um, so as soon as uh, we were able to, as we had our home, as we were settled, we started the foster parent journey in February. Um, so before I jump into the foster parent journey, I do want to touch a little bit about what foster care is all about. So foster care is here from the States to help reunify parents with their children. That is the number one goal of the foster, um, you know, of a foster family of child protective services is to get them back to their parents' home, their biological parent um, at all possible. That is the number one goal, my friend. Um, it is, you know, I love answering these questions. You know, I've had so many questions. Okay, passion for crafting. I foster over 200 amazing kids. I still keep in touch with them and they call me Aunt Jessie. I love that. I love that. Um, it's crazy. So foster care is to help reunify the um, child with their birth parent. And as Christians, we truly believe that um, we, you know, the child is always best off with their birth family until it doesn't make sense. Um, so the state works extremely hard the best they can to reunify the child with their birth parent. And I think here in Tennessee, the trajectory at max is about a year and a half. I think each state is very different. So stick with me. Um, and about a year and a half max until they may change the priority from reunification to at some other form of adoption or, you know, things like that. So how many children do we have? So we have two, uh, a boy and a girl, both elementary age. They're the sweetest. I wish I could show you pictures. I wish I could tell you all about them. Um, but I'm sure I'll share a story here and there. Um, but yeah, they're, they're amazing. So let me share with you kind of what it looked like when we started the foster care journey. So we started um, getting our home ready, started taking our training. We started all of that in February of this year. So February, we started... I say we, Courtney filled out so much of the paperwork, y'all. If you, you know, think that like, you know, you don't see her a lot on camera, you don't, you know, get to see her a lot here. She has such a heart for foster care and the foster parent journey. Um, it's beautiful. Like she could sit here and talk to you about the best trauma um, related techniques. And she's just so excited to help them um, and to serve them. And it's beautiful. So she filled out so much of the paperwork, like kudos to Courtney. I love my wife so much because um, she started all the paperwork and then the training started. It was about like an eight to 12 week, um, three hour chunks once a week that we were able to um, take the training. There was some on medication. There was some on parenting. There was some on the rules. There's you know, you have to have, guys, we also got our house ready. Um, in our home, I have no cleaning products in my kitchen, no cleaning products in my laundry room. They're all in a utility closet behind a lock. All my medication is locked up in my bathroom. Um, my garage has a key code lock on it. I mean, I'm talking 
there are so many things. We don't have babies, but all of our outlets have those covers. We have carbon monoxide. We have we have so many things on our property. Um, we have like a hot tub lock and things like that. Um, it is it is literally crazy at all the things you have to do to get approved. So um, we went through all of it. We went through all of it. Um, there's a lot of particular things that they have to have. Um, each foster child that you may have in your home must have their own bedroom, their own dresser, and their own closet, um, and their own bed. So it's really, um, you know, just a very specific process to make sure that they have everything they need to survive or, or thrive, excuse me. Uh, let me take a look at the comments. I want to make this great if you're watching the recorded. So I'm trying to not enter, like, I want to save a lot of the um, questions to the very end so that we can answer all of those um, for you. So if you're watching recorded, you're plugged into. Um, I'm raising grands. Yes, Connie, I love you. Hey, Amy, I've worked in the field for several years and it's a journey. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Oh my goodness. That's so awesome. You both are going to make good parents. My husband and I fostered two granddaughters for two years on, adopted them both. Y'all, I have to say our community here, I had no idea was so plugged in with the foster care journey or the adoption journey. Y'all, I looked back at our community before we took in the kids. Um, and the Lord has placed us with so many people that have adopted, that have fostered, that have walked with, you know, just such unique situations. So it's so crazy. So anyway, we went through the whole foster parent journey from February and we had our final, final meeting in May, um, which we were waiting to get one piece of paper from Pennsylvania recording previously lived. So we're like, okay, we're taking the summer to kind of chill on the boat at our lake house. Um, and I had some great relaxing time. I'm not going to say I didn't during May, June, um, uh, and the start of July. And then July hit and we, we scheduled our, scheduled our final walkthrough. So before you could have any kids in your home, any edits or any modifications to your home had to be made from the last, you know, walkthrough. So we made those adjustments and we scheduled it. We scheduled the walkthrough. I think if I pull up a calendar, let me, let me show you or tell you when we had scheduled it. So we had scheduled it for like the 14th. Um, it was on my schedule. We had bookmarked it. We were good to go, right? We were going to do the walkthrough um, of our home and we we're going to be good to go, but we were not going to take kids in until September. That was our goal, um, not to take kids until September. We we're going to finish out the summer. No need to, you know, mess up our summer is what we thought. <laughs> that is literally like my heart. I'm just being wide open um, as well. <gasps> Nancy and Sue, first time live. Welcome, 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 my friends. Hello, hello, hello. So glad you're here with me tonight. Uh, it's so good. So anyway. What we've got now is we were scheduled for that meeting. And then on do, 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 Saturday, July 10th, Saturday, July 10th, as you guys know, one of my best friends, um, Blake, is in college two hours away. So I said, you know what, Courtney, we have a free day. Let's go visit Blake, hang out with him for the day, have a great time. That's what we did. We ended up towards the end of our night at Target. And we were shopping for him some back to school supplies because he's going back to school for a sophomore year of, year of college. And then we hit the back to school section. And Courtney and I both looked at each other. All right, y'all. We looked at each other. And at the time, I did not think this was any big deal. Like, we just looked at each other and we're like, you know, if we're going to have school age kids in our home for this school year, we would really like them to be in our home probably before school. But we both like are probably thinking like that would not work out with our boat schedule. Like our boat schedule is literally go to the gym, come home, eat breakfast, boat. <laughs> like, like that's the schedule, right? Like that's the schedule. There's no room for the children. So we both said that out loud to each other. And then we did not say a word about it to each other again. All right, y'all, we were just ooing and aahing over the school supplies for children as anyone would. Do you guys ever think about that? Like I literally, literally think about that. Um, 
And it's awesome. Oh my gosh, Susie is also a foster care psychologist or psychotherapist. I, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. How neat. Um, so what happened between that moment, the Lord just like laid it in us and tried to trick us. No, I'm kidding. Did not trick us. If that moment did not happen and what I'm about to share happened, I don't think either of our hearts would have been in the right place. All right. So then Monday happens and I'm holding Kendall's baby, who's another one of my closest, probably my best friend. She is my best friend. Um, I'm holding her baby, watching her baby while she's at work. Um, long story short, I picked up the baby. We're at like interim ba- taking care of her baby for her. We're holding the baby. Courtney had been working on a DIY project that day. So she was painting. I was holding this baby. And our caseworker called our personal caseworker. Um, and we thought, you know, like she just want to follow up for our meeting on Wednesday. No, no, no. Catherine did not have that in her plan. Catherine did not have that up her sleeve. Catherine was calling about two beautiful souls. <laughs> Right in like that beautiful age that like we felt like would be super comfortable for our first ones. Um, I also have to say I had no, I just also want to be honest with you guys. When we started this journey, Courtney wants to fill our home with so many children. I don't know what it is about women. That's like their instinct. Like Courtney wants to fill her home with children. I, I do as well, but I feel like it's just so different. Anyway. I never thought we would ever take a sibling set. So like that was so far like love filled for me. I guess I was naive about it now that it's happened. But anyway, two's a little more than one. Obviously it's double. So keep that in mind. She calls and says, hey, I have a boy. I have a girl. They're this age. They're this age. Very close in age. Um, I'll say they're between five and nine. So get mysterious with your guessing, (laughs) Um, but very close in age. So um, would you take them in? They're at a home, but it's only very temporary. We need a long-term parent. And Courtney and I just kind of looked at each other and Courtney has a list of questions. So if you're ever going to become a foster parent um, or you are a foster parent and you don't do this, this is great. Um, Have a list of like six questions, like however many questions and look them up on specifics. Like, do they have any um, special needs? Have they ever been removed like from a foster home and why? Um, There's, there's a lot of great questions that you can research and ask. We have a list I should have brought down here um, for the lot. So she asked those questions and said, okay, we'll talk and get back to you. And we were so like excited. Like it was so weird. It was so weird. Um, We'd been living at our lake house. Some of our friends were staying at this home, keeping it for us because they're doing an internship. And we said, yeah, we'll take, we'll we'll, we'll do it. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll open our home. We'll get everything done. We'll get everything ready. Um, we also have read that even if you say yes, like you'll take these kids, there's plenty of time in the interim that like DCS may find a, a family member to take them. Another, like they may want to stay. They may, you know, there's so many eggs up in the air that could make it not happen. So we were like, okay, okay. Like we said, yes, we, you know, just putting it out there saying, you know, Lord, you have our full yes. Like this was on our hearts um, Saturday. Like there's no coincidence by Monday. We didn't do anything. The Lord did it all um, for us. So that, um, that happened. And it's two weeks, two weeks from two weeks ago to today um, that we've had the kids. They are beautiful. They are amazing. Um Honestly, and I just have to be, I just have to be super honest. Everything that we were scared about, that we were nervous about, didn't happen. Every single thing that we were nervous about, that we were scared about, did not happen. Um, These have been, you know, if we, years from now, I know we're going to look back at these kids and say, wow, like for our first placement, They were so special. They were so amazing. Um, And we're so thankful because a lot of the things that they train you for, a lot of things they equip you for, um, 
for example, they equip you, like, if the children do come with clothes, which these kids did, like, tons of clothes, um, be prepared like they would all have bugs or anything like that. No, that did not happen for us. Praise the Lord. Um, that is amazing. And we are so thankful. Like, we're so grateful. But I just wanted to share that because, like, sometimes foster care gets such a bad rap. Um, and such a bad rap. And it's not you know, always what you may make it out to be. Um, so I, I want to share this like just as a raw, real, you know, perspective. So, you know, the first night we took out to dinner, we, um, you know, chased down our caseworker to make sure we had our foster parenting contracts because um, we didn't get those, which is the only thing our caseworker said we had to do. Like if we get like if we had nothing, just have your contract in case anything happens, um, because that is what's really, really important. So that's amazing. We are so excited and we took them to school registration um, tonight, which is awesome. But I also want to share, you know, a little bit more about that first week. So we're still getting to know the um kids. We're still trying to understand the situation because as a foster parent, you don't know a ton until like this initial kickoff call. Um, the kickoff call is when like everybody kind of huddles together. It's like, who we got? Like, what we got on our plate? <laughs> what, what everybody comes together, put together like strategies, pinpoints and everything. And that was really, um, again, I can't share a ton of information because I'm still learning what I could share, what I can't share, specifics. But I will say, I never thought that I would feel so much love, so much support and wanting to advocate for the biological family. I'm just going to say family um, more than I have in this situation. There's so much that needs to be corrected in this system and trying to truly get the best support for these families um, across the board, across the board, from the kid to the family, um, everything. So, you know, it's not, you know, these kids are beautiful, amazing children. Like they're, they're so um, awesome and they're nothing like, you know, until you, I guess, see, you know, a kid in, in the system or in the foster care system or anything like that, like you never really um, know. And I never thought about what it would look like for Courtney and I to speak towards the, um, to their parents, like their family. Like I never thought that would, I, I thought there was going to be like this big wall. Like here, here's what I thought. Like I thought this was my wall. I'll say this was my wall. I'm over here on this side. The biological parents are on this side. Like I thought this was, there was a wall up. I thought there was a wall up. I would never speak to them besides like maybe once or twice. No, that has not been the case. And I'm so grateful for that. Uh, it's, it's hard, um, but it's, it's amazing. And, you know, we are so excited for this journey to help, you know, let that, the biological parents know that like we are rooting for them. We, we support them. We want them um, to have their kids in their home as soon as possible. Um, the initial week or so was awesome. We, you know, the, the parents were gracious enough to approve for them to travel with us, which was such a big deal because we do not want them to go to respite and just feel like they're getting passed around. You know, if we are wherever we are, we want them to feel consistent with us um, in this journey, like with us. So that, you know, if their mom or their family can't be there for them, like we want to be the, you know, be there and be consistent until the day they get reunified. So with that, we really felt it was important to bring them um, on our vacation. And I really want to be careful about how I speak towards this because I have got so many messages of people saying, hey, like, taking him on your boat, like probably isn't the best thing. Like taking him on vacation probably isn't the best thing. Um, and I just really want to tread lightly to respect if you, if you do feel that way, if you are a foster parent and you don't 
include your foster kids because you don't want to create some type of weird like resentment to their family. I respect that. Um, but Courtney and I are on our own journey of foster parenting. And from my perspective, right now, today, I'm documenting this so I can watch this 10 years from now as well. Um, my goal is to get these kids plugged in to our home, just like if we had, if they were our own kids. Like that's, that's what they want as a foster parent. That's what they trained us to do um, is to include them on those vacations, to plug them into our home. And that's what we, we're, we've been doing. Um, it was very interesting, the messages of like all the things I've, I've got, like, you know, this and that of like what people think we should do. Apparently when you become a parent, you also get so much unsolicited advice. Um, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I will just be like, again, that's just being honest, open. I am so grateful for the support system I do have and the people that I have seeked out, um, the people in my corner that I know are there. Guys, the people that showed up, like the Lord had every single thing lined up. Um, just so happened I had a dinner lined up that week with my pastor, um, which was so fun having them over. So like they got to meet the kids, the kids love their kids. They get along so good. Um, just everything we've had, you know, friends bring dinner over, friends show support, my phone calls, like everything like has just been so amazing for us. Um, and it's, it's, I, I, I love it. So I don't know where I was going. I think that was the first big ramble of my, of my time. Oh, taking them on vacation. So taking them on vacation was also a very, very special time um, that they got to meet Courtney's family and just get plugged in and we get to know them more. And I found out, you know, one of them loves to bike. And so we got on a bike when we got home. The big thing that we've been trying to do is treat them again, just like our own kids. We're not over spoiling them with too much stuff. We don't have a lot of stuff for kids, so they feel like they might be getting a little bit more, but we're letting them know like, hey, this is our homes. This is our homes, X, Y, and Z um, book or toy or something like that, um, you know, and letting them know the difference between theirs and ours top deal as well, um, just so that they don't feel like they're being given everything. So it's been, that's been interesting. I will say, Screen time has been like so limited. I'm very happy. Screen time on movies. Oh my gosh. Like for TV, like they don't even ask for TV really, which has been great. We registered them for school today. It was awesome. Vacation was so special. Courtney's family um, was so welcoming to them and they, you know, loved it. And it was just so, so, so good to, to love on that. And then when we came home from the trip, um, you know, we've been waiting and just as again, just another raw, real like foster parenting moment. We've been waiting for the the shoe to drop. Like when like these kids have been too, too amazing. Right. And the other night, the shoe finally dropped for one of our buddies um, and just had a really rough night of wanting to go home, of wanting, you know, their mom and like, that's, you know, something that you have to be ready for when you're fostering, when you're, you know, going in that step is to try to comfort them. Um, you know, it's hard when you don't know what to say either. And I'll just be completely frank, like Courtney and I really um, struggled, you know, in that moment. But I ended up one of Courtney's tips that she was telling me about. This is another really funny thing, y'all. The Lord has showed up for us. I wish I journaled every single day of that first week. I, I really wish I did because the Lord showed up for us in so many ways. So anyway, I believe it was the day, like an hour or two before Courtney got the call um, for the kids. And she said, hey, like, listen to this. So no matter what age kid, the number one tool that foster um, parent, the foster parent she follows because she listens to podcasts about it, um, recommend is a rocking chair. She's just like, and she says she's rocked kids from like 10 to like 12, you know, for X amount of reasons, dealing with trauma, obviously. Um, and I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Crazy. So my little buddy, um, way past his bedtime, crying, wanting to go home, wanting his mom. 
about to make himself sick. Honestly, I felt so terrible. Um, I looked at Courtney and I was like, Courtney, what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we supposed to do? She's like, we need a rocking chair. I was like, should I walk around the house? Like, what can I do? Um, so we ultimately decided to, for me to walk him around the house, uh, like carrying him. And then I was like, I'll make my own rocking chair. So I sat on the edge of her couch and kind of just rocked him, you know, back to like rocked him, physically rocked him um, without like, without a rocking chair. And he finally fell asleep. So I put my first kid to sleep. I never put a baby to sleep. <laughs> I put an elementary age child to sleep, which I've told multiple um, people about. <laughs> I felt like I, you all deserve to know as well. Um, but it was really, you know, special that we, you know, feel called like right here in our home to like that be our mission field, right? Like some people get sent out, but I really have also like, like correlated, you know, mission work. Um, like sharing the gospel, if you will, um, and local sharing the gospel, but foster care. Like I never knew they would be intertwined. Like I always thought they were going to be like this, but it honestly has been a journey of, you know, that are really like this. Like the mission field is local. Um, the mission field for a lot of people, you know, those are the people that are the easiest to touch, that are needing it the most. Um so for people really close in our area that we can touch, that we can impact and be a part of the um, transformation, I think it's such a blessing. I, I hope my prayer is that, you know, months, years down the road, every, all of us in this situation can look back and say, hey, you know, we're so, you know, grateful that the kids had a safe place to be while the parents are going through some stuff and getting some stuff figured out, um, which is really, really important. Courtney! Target ordered a chair that night. Not even go live. She ordered the chair. <laughs> the chair is coming. It is going to be here very, very soon. Um, so I love it. Who doesn't love a rocking chair? What a nice feeling. Yeah, it's amazing. I when anytime I was crying as a little kid, I did not want to cry by myself. <laughs> like I had a reason to cry, so I wanted you know walk with. So we we got the rocking chair. I just want to let you all know. Um, but anyway. So good. It is. It has just been. It's been just an amazing, an amazing thing um, to like that. Have that as our, you know, mission field. Another thing that has been a little interesting, and it's not been anything that anyone purposely has done. But as we get to know the kids more, as they get more comfortable, there's starting to be things that are more of like trigger words, um, like talking about us as a family. Um, is really triggering for them, like catches them. They're like, wait, and get confused. Um, so we can't really talk about like instead of family dinner, dinner, like instead of family dinner, it's more of a group dinner. Um, one of our, one of the kids asked like, when are the parents going to bed? Um, as we were putting them to bed and that kind of sent into a little, little bit of a spiral. So we, you know, been learning to maneuver things like that, but it has honestly all been such a special, special journey to walk with these children. And I'm just so excited. So I want to open up for any questions. I also promised I would share other updates other than the children, because I know some of you all may be like, stop talking about your personal life. I want to know about crafts. <laughs> so if you have any questions regarding foster parenting, foster care, um, any personal question, you could ask me what you know, what colors, my, what's my favorite colors. So go ahead and you can start asking those in the comments. I do want to let you guys know about a little bit of different things. We have our Flash 30 sale going on. Now I've not been plugged in lately, but if you guys did not see Rachel and Becca and Kendall and Anna and the dog and the baby literally host, like become Oprah, we gave over a thousand dollars away in our Facebook group. So if you have not joined our member only community, you're missing out on so many opportunities. Let me explain everything you get when you become a member of Makers Glowing. Thousands of cut falls to master your cricket, hundreds of fonts, training courses when you go yearly. Um, there's so many opportunities, y'all, to get plugged in today. If you love your cricket, you love crafting, you have got to join as soon as you can. Do not walk, run for the sale. So it's flash 30. Use that coupon code 
flash 30 to save $30 on your membership tonight. What's your favorite color? Brenda wants to know. Brenda, this might be shocking. It's one of the only colors on my screen right now. It's black. I love black. Black is my favorite color. I'm so, so excited. Uh, and I love it. <gasps> the giveaway was great. Yes, craft with those kids. Oh my gosh, Heather. We have been outside so much because it's their last like week of summer vacation. Um, but we will be crafting. We're going to be doing, I think, some epoxy pins for their teachers. We finally got their teachers' names tonight. Um, so it's so good. What does the rocking chair look like? Kendall wants to know. Kendall, honey, I was too busy rocking that baby sleep. Whatever. I don't know. Courtney will have to show you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll send you a picture tonight. Um, I love it. I love it. How long do you think you guys will have them? Oh my gosh, just country girl. Great question. With foster care, you never know. It could be another day. It could be two months. It could be six months. It could be a year. You like you literally have no idea. That's kind of part of the fun. <laughs> um, the kids are going to be arts and crafts. Um, yes, Ace Arts and Crafts is school. Woohoo! Can you all give a member tutorial of the website? Because I seem to be missing stuff. Yes. So we have an updated tour as we've switched around the menu bar coming out very soon. That is awesome. Uh, Tanner Black is not a color. Angie is what a color. I love it. Sue, maybe down the line, how do you upload SVG images I have made? So, Miss Sue, if you search on the channel, you could find the video. But if you're a member and you want to know how to upload a member SVG, we have a training on that as well. I love you. I love you. Or I love it. Um, did Becca tell you she's been making with the Glowforge? Beth, yes. So one of my good friends, and he works for us, he set up the Low Forge for us and showed Becca how to work it. It's been awesome. I have not um, been able to play with it yet, which I'm very excited. Um, what's been, ooh, this one looks great. What has been the most heartwarming experience since the children have been with you? <laughs> oh my gosh, heartwarming experience. Ooh, I don't know. Like, okay, I'll, I'll say this. My favorite time with the kids. There was a time that I, if you guys know me um, or known like me and my journey for any amount of time, I'm very dedicated to my mission here. Um, it evolves, it changes, it shifts, you know, throughout, but it always is focused. So, it, you know, sometimes we're in a growth phase, sometimes we're in a, you know, a building phase, like there's different types of phases I'm in. And I love being with the kids when they go to bed. I love reading books to them. I love being there in the mornings. I love helping with bath. It's the little things with me, y'all. It is the smallest, smallest thing um, that I really, I love. So there was a moment the first week that I got home from the gym that they got breakfast. They wake up during the summer, like at 8.30, 8.20. Um, and I was just sitting in the living room floor playing cows. <laughs> and that was pretty heartfelt for me, um, just to be able to, you know, do that with them. You need to have chicken SVGs. Okay, Amy, I'm on it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I love it. I love it. Don't know if this question was answered, but how do you not get attached to the end? Kimberly, that is an amazing question. And I want to address it. The goal is for you to get attached. Um, that's a hundred percent the goal. So you're battling this weird thing the entire time of what does that look like? Like if they leave your home tomorrow, what are you going to do? Like, so the goal is to get attached. Like you are to treat them like your own children and that's what they want you to do. So yes, you want them to be attached. You want them to attach to you and to do life together and all the things um, and it's beautiful. It is beautiful. So yes, that is, um, that's part of the fun. You, you have to, uh, I, I think what really helped me again, let's go back a little before, as we're going through the process, learning that, you know, Jesus made families, you know, the, like the creator, made families and, you know, showed us that that is, you know, his plan there, the, the plan, um, and to be able to help in 
a time span for someone to do the work that they need to do to get their kids back. Like it's so much bigger than us or our selfishness. Like, honestly, like that's what it comes down to. Like, I love these kids, but I know their mom loves their, their kids even more. And I'm supposed to love the kids and the mom is supposed to love the kids more. So like, that's what we, that's the goal, right? Like that's the goal. Um, are you sharing Jesus with them? Just country girl. Is that even a question? These kids are in children's church. These kids only listen to worship music besides. Oh, this is so sweet. Okay. One of our little friends. She, uh, I played Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles. And she says, can I listen to Watermelon Sugar Pa? In the song, it says, Watermelon Sugar Pa. Watermelon sugar, ha, watermelon sugar, pa, watermelon sugar, pa. She thinks it's watermelon sugar, pa. So, like, that's the only secular song she's listened to, and it's precious. Maybe some country music on the boat, but, like, in the car, we're jamming to the worship jams. If you've been to my house, you know that's pretty much all I listen to. So, um, oh, thank you for doing sublimation on the coasters. Susan says, Tanner, thanks for sharing your personal journey. Foster parenting, I think you and Courtney are wonderful. Oh, thank you so much, Miss Susan. Oh, my gosh. We have our church college group to our house for their worship and fun activities. I've adopted 14 kids. I love it. Every chaotic minute. Would you and are you planning to adopt them or any foster kid? Um, so I definitely see our life involving some type of like foster adoption, adoption, and biological children. You all would not believe. <laughs> this is just like, I know somebody is wondering this, so I'm just going to answer it. Um, you don't have to ask. There's been messages I've received of people saying, oh, Tanner, I'm so excited you're fostering, but like, can Courtney not have kids? <laughs> and honestly, Courtney or I, either one, have not, maybe, I don't know if they check this when they got your like, gynecologist, but um, for like a regular appointment, or like my, I've never, I, I assume we can have biological children. We have not tried to have biological children um, yet. And yeah. So people assume just because we're fostering, we couldn't have biological children. And again, me being, you know, really honest like that, it's kind of offensive. So please be careful what you say out loud. Um, how can you not? Yes. Oh, Hannah, I love that. Being a foster parent is a wonderful blessing on everyone involved, the children's experience and stability in the foster parents experience. Yes, it does grow. Like you feel your heart grow, you grow for the kids. The intercession that I've had for their mom has just been just probably been the the hardest part is, you know, is more, the more that you love the kid, I think this is the biggest takeaway. The more that you love the kids, the more that you walk with the kids, the more you want their mom to be back, the more you want their mom to be everything that they need. Um, so it's easy to walk with them you know, for that, it's, it becomes your, one of your top priorities is to be an intercession and to be praying and to, you know, just be praying blessings over them and just, you know, try to give them everything they need. Um, Jen, thank you for being honest. I love it. Um, I love being honest. It's really easy to do that. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, Hacho Kolo, how are you? Math Brian, I miss you. Um, I so appreciate the education, um, that y'all provide you, y'all in the membership have helped me so much. Yay, Amber! If any of you all are brand new, can you comment and just let me know that you're new to the community? Just because I want to personally welcome you now that we're at that part of, um, the live stream where we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that's why I love being a CASA. Oh my gosh. So, Connie, thank you for bringing that up. So I wrote it down, how to help. So I've got messages like this, like how do I help foster parents and or what can I do for these kids that are in the system that are needing help, you know, in different ways. First of all, if you could become a foster parent, that would be amazing. <laughs> like I just want to put that, I just want to throw that out there. If I can do it, if you can, like if I can do it, you can do it type thing. If you make it a priority and really think about, you know, if you have kids now, if you may not have kids right now, maybe all your kids moved out, whatever that is, you know, be 
open for it. Pray about it. Um, if, if that could be something you do today, a year from now, five years from now, I don't care. But I don't want you to be here thinking that you couldn't do it. Um, like that, that's never a possibility because that's just not, that's not the truth. Um, we're all called um, to help, um, the, like take kids in, the orphans. Like that's what we're all called to do. That's all of our job in some some way, form, fashion. That's our job. Your job, my job, everybody's job. Um, so foster. That's a great way to do it. Join join us in the trench. Like we will hope help each other. Like get through it together, uh, which is awesome. So next after that, there are um, advocates. Advi like advocating programs. So here in Tennessee, you can become a CASA, which is a child advocate. Um, and you are in addition to their foster parent and you meet with them every month, every six weeks, every two months, and you speak um, and advocate for the kid. You're not the foster parent. You're not the biological parent. You talk to the judge and advocate um, for the child. That it's, it's a beautiful, amazing thing. I want you to look up what that looks like in your state. It's so much fun. Christina, first live I could ever hop on. Hello, hello, hello. I love it. Stacy says, I bought the Design Make Sale program and still stuck. Please let me know what questions you would like improved for Design Make Sale. We have some upcoming meetings about that. So I'm so excited. Brenda says, will you be able to keep in touch when they go back to their family? Um, I think that's up to birth mom. Like that's up to their their family. I, I sure hope so. I would love that. Um, Patty says, Tanner, my heart is so full for y'all. So many beautiful words. Thank you for letting us share in your journey. Oh, thank you. And um, I also wanted to share another uh, program that we have here in the state of Tennessee, but I love. Um, so what I wanted to share is um, we have something called the Isaiah House. Um, so Isaiah House here maybe something similar in your neck of the woods is a home that foster children just entering the system can go to. They can get um, clothes, uh, toiletries, a clean shower, dinner. The caseworker can have a desk to go at late at night to work on placing this kid in a, an actual home. They can have a bed for the night. Um, it's a home for foster kids that just entered the system. And that's something they're trying to put in every county across the state because we in Tennessee have a large need for this. And I know in states across the, the country, um, there's a need. So that's, that's another way you can get plugged in. If you, you know, I see some, uh, Sarah says, what if you can't drive due to a disability? Um, I, I don't know what they would do regarding that, but there's other ways to be involved too. So, you know, working with local foster care agencies, reach out and say, hey, how can I help? Like, is there anything I could I could make? Is there anything like I could do? Um, you know, here's my limitations, but I have this available. Like, what, what can we do together? Because those agencies um, are very interested in working with you guys. For example, Courtney um, decorated foster um, bedrooms for foster parents years ago before we could be a foster home or Courtney babysat um, so that foster parents could all come together and, you know, be in the trench together while she and like another uh, one or two people would watch their kids. So there's, there's so many ways to plug in and serve this community. Um, yes. Be a cor appointed special advocate. Casa. Yes, Debbie. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Patty first live from Franklin, Tennessee. I love Franklin. I love Franklin. I miss it. Um, oh yay. First time live. Hello. 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 Member for three years. Hey Don, Jacqueline. I'm a newbie. Welcome. Welcome. Stacy. new and need help. Welcome. Welcome. Um, in God's timing, you will have your own. The point is you're helping children and their parents. Yes. That's the goal. A house full is amazing. And your foster kids are blessed. Um, oh, I, we are blessed with them y'all. We are so blessed with them. Um, it is so good. Just join Makers Gonna Learn all because of you and Courtney and your mission to be the lot of Jesus. Susan, welcome, welcome, welcome. Guys, so that goes back to me at like 10 o'clock in the morning playing with these children. Um, and that's part of it. Like I get to work here and at home. I get to work in the office. I get to work at a coffee shop. Like the work, you know, first of all, it never stops. <laughs> Second of all, you know, it, it flows. So I can, you know, work really hard. Like I can do, I'm so blessed to be able to do one live video 
and reach thousands of people. I can record one video and reach thousands of people. We can put together amazing strategies and amazing emails to reach our thousands of members. Like we are so blessed, like to be able to serve you guys, um, to serve the community here, to, you know, pour into you all, to help you live happier, creative lives and build something that you're passionate about. Like that's amazing work. But in addition to that, the Lord has allowed me to use this business we've built, not only to serve the hundreds of thousands of you that have been touched by the work we've done at Makers and Learn, but also to allow us to serve one-on-one with these kids. I mean, I could never have dreamed. Like if I, like my, like on my heart recently has been like, God, you are a way better author than I ever will be. So like the pen is in your hands. You just like write the directions. Like th- that's what it looks like when the Lord has your full yes, is that he can write his story for you and about you um, in such a clear way. He can He can write the story and you just follow it. You follow him because following Jesus is, you know, is going to lead you in the way of, you know, serving your life and, and just so much. I know I, I normally talk so like top level and I obviously still think this is a little top level on, you know, religion and, you know, things like that. But like, I, I walk this out, like, you know, I could never have dreamed to be here today at 20. I, I looked at my, looked at what time it was. I was trying to figure out how old I was. I'm almost 23. Um, and to be able to, you know, get to walk with these kids, like, I, I'm just so thankful. My heart is so full tonight that we get to serve you guys at our, at our work, that it's barely even considered work because we all love it so, so much, like getting to serve you guys and, you know, get to know you all at scale, like thanks to the internet, like such a blessing, but I'm so, I'm so thankful. And uh, Kendall says, amen. God's plan are far better than ours. Right. You know, it's so good. We're going to have to have Kendall on a live to talk about her journey because, like, Kendall has been walking in the trends of parenting um, over this past year as well. I'm so proud of Kendall. Um, Aw, Tina says, I'm new and very blessed to hear your story tonight. Thank you for your honesty, blessings on your journey. And the last thing I want to share tonight, I don't know why, y'all, I don't know why I feel called to share this tonight. I really wish I don't. I'm putting my foot up. I've been in therapy for the past few weeks. Um, So sharing like, you know, wow, like the Lord has used, you know, is using me, is has used me. Uh, I'm I'm so thankful and blessed. Like, yes, I am. But I want to share with you all like just a little bit more of like what we're talking about in my therapy. So I got to share pretty much my story with my therapist. If you've ever been in therapy, the first few sessions are very interesting. (laughs) Uh, you're getting to know each other, right? Um, I just started therapy, so I've not been in a lot, like never had a therapist. Go with me. And I said, I feel so guilty talking about my past and the things that have hurt me and the things that have pushed me to work this hard. And I don't know, I don't know if this is the time to share like my entire life story. It's probably not. Um, But I just want to share with you guys like, there's a reason that I've built everything I've built at such a young age, the why, the draw, the passion. There's I've been in traumatic situations and I have things I have to work through so that I can be the best dad, the best husband um, and things like that. So yes, I am super thankful. Yes, I'm super blessed. Um, but I feel guilty to say, you know, in my past has caused me trauma, has caused me things to work through because I'm so grateful for how the Lord has been able to take a story that was so broken, a story that was so, so sad um, to see a mountain that I never thought I would get over when you're like at the bottom of the mountain, when you're at your lowest low, And if that's you tonight, if you are at your wit's end, if you are here tonight and you're saying like, you know, Tanner, 
I don't think I'll ever overcome that. I just want to let you guys know, I, not many years ago, I was probably 13. My mom was unemployed. My grandparents were supporting us. And I was literally had memories of me and my mom going around our home, taking quarters to go get a milkshake. And ever since then, I have had it on my heart to be able to afford to get a milkshake. That's all I've wanted to be able to do. And obviously, I've never cried on a live video. And I'm going to pull myself together here in a moment. Um, but obviously, you know, that was when I was in 20, when I was 13, 14 or so. So that's what motivated me to get up and be able to support my family. And there was so many other things going on in my life that I'm just not comfortable to share to why we were in such a terrible place. And it, it goes on and on, my friends. It goes on and on um, past that. But just to give you a glimpse into where I've been to push myself to work this hard, um, to hit the goals that I wanted. And I still, my friends, a number on my bank account has never been comforting to like what you think it is. I don't know if you all have also been there that you still feel the heartache, that you still feel the same way that you would feel when you had nothing. Um, a lot of people call it like the poverty mindset. If that is a thing, I do have it. Um, but I want to say that, that, you know, it, you can overcome that mountain and that the Lord, you know, following him is going to take that and is going to morph you into a person that is grateful. You know, that is, he has done such amazing things and takes such a, such a broken story and turn it into something beautiful that today I uh, am able to sit here and say that I'm so thankful that I went through that. Is that not crazy? I'm going to therapy to work through my past, but I'm also sitting here today saying, thank you, God, for calling me to go through that. Thank you for calling me to do hard stuff when I was like 13 years old um, because I have... I've had, I've worked to do, like I have worked to do in the kingdom of the Lord, um, to serve children, to serve you guys here. Um, and it's just a very, very interesting perspective. And I, I know that you all at home, that you watching here, if you're watching this, uh, who knows when, um, have a similar story, you know, that the Lord can take it and twist it and cleanse it and make it right. That, you know, if you're stuck under someone else's circumstance, that he can take it and just write you a new story. And that, you know, when you hand him the pen, when you give up the pen to him and you just sit and wait and watch that amazing things will happen. And it's just so comforting that, when I, you know, get in my car and I can do nothing but weep for my heart for these children, um, to know that I have my testimony to sit back on and say, oh yeah, the Lord did this for my life. The Lord is going to take these two beautiful children I put to bed a, a little over two hours, around it, an hour and a half ago, and he's going to make something beautiful of their story. And that's just how I sleep at night, y'all. That is how I sleep at night is knowing the Lord is going to write beautiful stories for these children, that the Lord is going to do a work and that we have just got to give him the pen. So, oh my gosh, I have a great thing. I'm going to read some comments at this point. Um, I do not usually cry on live streams. We will not tell anyone about this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can do all things through him who give me strength. Uh, Philippians 4.13. I love it. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yes. He never promised we would str have struggles. He promised he would bring us through it. Amen, Belinda. Amen. Your past is journey. Therapy is a good thing, Tanner. It gives you empathy. Your faith and joy shines through. Heather Deal. Yes, we, <laughs> we are going to keep this to ourselves. 
Oh my goodness. I can only imagine where your life will take you. You're so young and have wisdom of much older person. I'm excited to see where God leads you. Thank you so much, Miss Kat. Um, you grow through what you go through and you have come out stronger on the other side. Amen, Carla. I love that. Good job. Cleaning supplies and meds should be locked up. Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, your journey has equipped you to be the man you are today. I remember those days. That was you, um, your time. Yes, I love it. I love it. Tanner, I needed you to not. Thank you, Miss Amy. Miss Amy, it is the Lord's time that we are here. I wanted to be here Sunday night, but instead I was rocking, almost said their name. I was rocking a child to sleep. So tonight was your not, Miss Amy. Thank you, Tanner. I have a lot of brokenness and disappointment at this time. Miss Sue, I just pray right now for Miss Sue, that, Lord, that you just wrap her, that you comfort her, that you give her just a sign that you are walking right by her, Lord, and that she knows that you are watching over her and that can just guide her through whatever she is going through. Amen. Oh my goodness, y'all. This is this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Don't feel guilty, God. <laughs> keep, um, keep doing his precious work. He is succeeding. Amen. We are the Lord. I pray. And if you're looking for a way to like start praying this as well, I started praying a long time ago. Lord, like let me just be a river that just can flow, you know, whatever you want out of me, right? Like that's that's all it is. Hey from per Puerto Rico, congrats on this beautiful journey. I love this live chat. Everyone is full of good vibes, right? Amen. 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 I love it. I love it. This is community. Yes, it is, Heather. Oh my gosh, thank you. The amount of people that have like huddled behind us in prayer. Um, the Lord has blessed us with everything. Um, so anytime people ask us like what we need, it's the prayer. It's the prayer. Um, oh, didn't know I needed this tonight. The Lord has guided me here. Jen, hello. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Oh, Jesus does some amazing stuff, y'all. I feel like we need to break out some hymns. Beth, oh my goodness. If we just broke out in some praise and worship, I love that. I love that. Um, thank you, Tanner. Before I got on, I was feeling a little low. My sister-in-law is passing away. And to hear the great things you were doing, the Lord has left my spirit. Josephine, this is the third time today that I've heard of uh, an aunt, uh, a sister-in-law, and a brother-in-law to pass, that is past or passing. Um, so I'm also going to be in prayer with you. There's so much heartache right now, so we'll definitely be in prayer for you and your family. Um I almost cried listening to you speak. That is why um, I joined the group. I love it. God bless you on your journey. Thank you, Miss Teresa. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yes. Hi, Tanner. I just came on to see you live. So I don't know what has been happening. Just join Makers and Learn. Welcome, Elizabeth. Woohoo! We have been, you're going to have to watch the replay. Just rewind. Don't even watch the live. Just start from the beginning. Get some popcorn. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Tanner, you were here for a reason, helping all of us. Everything happens for a reason. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. I just got on your live video as you were praying. What a blessing to see someone sharing their faith with so many others. Thank you. I'll catch up with the earlier part of the video. Thank you, Miss Pat. One thing I love about faith and like religion and Jesus is that the thing is, I have friends that are atheists and I would consider them my best friend. I would have friends that are totally different Christians than me. I'm cool with that. I have Catholic friends. I have Methodist friends. I have um, all types of religions. I have Buddhist friends. I have, you know, um, that not like all the things because here's the thing. I, I don't have to judge anyone. I just get to walk with you. And like, if you're cool with me sharing Jesus, I'm cool with you telling me that you don't like, like you, that you're not into it. Like, if you are someone that is not religious watching this video, I'm cool. Like it's, it's all good. Like I'm not here to prove a point to anybody. All I can talk about is where I've been and what I've done. So I think that's the, that's my favorite thing about it. Like, um, and, and the reason why I do that is because I used to judge like other Christians. And that was like, as a naive Christian of me to, to judge other things and when you, you know, finally realize that some of the things you judge, like you changed your perspective on, 
it makes you start thinking like what other perspectives can be changed. So I love it. I love it. Oh, popcorn and Kleenex. Hey, the D. Amen. I never catch any lives on time. And this was meant to be. I've been going through some postpartum depression. The Lord is going to bring you through it. And I, you know, there's just been something that I truly believe that what you're going through, you're going to be able to help. Think about, and this is hard when you're in the trench. So like, bear with me. But think about, you know, as you're going through this, what you would share with yourself at that point, you know, to someone else. Like as you overcome that, think about what testimony you're going to have to help someone in your shoes, you know, once you're over that hurdle. Because, you know, it is it is just like Miss Belinda said, like the Lord never promised we were not going to struggle or we're not going to go through hard stuff, but he promised he was going to bring us through it. And we have to keep that have to keep looking at that. So I love it. I'm Catholic and my husband is not. We are together for 15 plus years and counting. Hey, it's what you can do. Mm. This is Courtney's water bottle. I left mine. Who knows where I've, I've lost both of mine. Mm. Yes. The God I serve is the same God you serve. Does that matter? It does not matter in the name of the religion. Amen. Oh my goodness. Okay. Final call. I got to get in bed. We're past the hour mark. Um, I got to get in bed because, you know, I'm I'm tired dad now. Um, oh, my gosh. Angie says, Tanner, you're an amazing soul. I'm so happy, glad I uh, happened upon your channel last year. Congrats to you, Courtney. Oh, thank you, Miss Angie. Angie. Um, Kat says, we all need a heart sharing Jesus like Tanner. Fear has stopped me so often. I wish I had the confidence. Miss Cat, I uh, do not. Uh, funny story. I could probably do better sharing Jesus to like a thousand people on the internet than like one person in real life. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. It passed your best time. Blessings to all. Yes. If y'all have any other questions, religion, foster care, personal, my diet regimen, I don't know, whatever you want to ask, go ahead and ask it real quick. If you have any questions before we head out, um, all, thank you guys so much for all of the messages. You all are the sweetest. Um, we love, love, love everything that you guys do. Been a member since you started Makers Learn. Yay! Oh my gosh. Also, here is the coupon code FLASH30. I'll be live tomorrow. I think it's at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, so you guys can come craft with me. But I definitely want to do this live stream so that we don't have to share it on tomorrow's live stream. Lord must have seen me here tonight. Pray for my father-in-law. He's in the process of passing over as we speak. There's so many. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to be praying um, for you, Miss Teresa, and your father in law and all your family. Um, there's so much heartache right now. Um, can I use Baker's Learner SVGs for selling products? Amanda, if you are a yearly member, you have the commercial license. So you can take our SVGs, you can use those, and you can um, sell it You up to 500. So I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys. I think I've answered all the questions. So that is just beautiful. Um, so thank you guys so, so much. This has been an amazing, amazing um, time to connect. We will definitely do this more um, as I go through parenting journey. Francie, I just renewed my 30 year membership. Woohoo! Go Francie, go Francie. I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much for um, helping my you know dreams and visions come to life. Um, it is so sweet. Um, but yes, thank you guys so much. Thank you so, so much for all the things that you're doing um, here in our community. We need people like you. Um, so if you are not already a member, come join us. We would love to, for you to join our creative crafty family. And I'll see you back here real soon, my friends. Bye now.